Full-time RVing has been the greatest adventure of our lives. But all good things must come to an end. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. And long story short... We've spent the last three and a half years RVing and uh, it's it's coming to an end. You know, all good things might, must come to an end. And we're gonna get into more detail in the video about what the plan is for the future of the RV Odd Couple, the RV Odd Squad, Thunder Canyon, all of it. So I think a really important place to start off is like, well, why the heck did we start <laughs> RVing in the first place? Um, you know, what purpose did RVing serve in, in this journey? Um, you know, when John and I met, John likes to tell people that we met in a church basement. And it's that true. makes, it is true, but it makes us sound better than, we were in a church basement at a recovery meeting because they don't let, they don't let you go like in the main level of those kinds of meetings. <laughs> okay, we were in. They keep people like us in the basement. Yeah, they keep them like out of public view. <laughs> And uh, we met at a time in our lives where we were both pretty broken and... Um, About 13 years ago. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I think it's funny. Your friends at one point said uh, there was a slim to nothing chance that you and I would make it and Slim had just left the building. It's true. And we fell in love. We were good friends first for a year before we ever really fell in love, but we we fell in love and that's where the adventure began yeah. along that way we built a very successful business in De denver colorado i left my occupation of 10 years to join him and we figured out soon that we were a dream team that yeah. his strengths and my strengths complement each other um i'm really good at what he's weak in he's really good at what i'm weak in yep. and that business just took off we were blessed well okay so the reality is everything looked really good on the outside however on the inside we were miserable we were dying and you know sometimes uh too much success can actually be more detrimental to someone's recovery than failure yeah and but you're missing a big point we got together in recovery but then a few years into our recovery we fell off both that's of what us. i'm trying to talk okay, about okay because our business was so successful we were so busy that we fell off into what started us into what had grounded us and so then we had we were seemingly on the pinnacle of our achievement in this beautiful house in florida when in reality we had fallen backwards and, and didn't so, even realize that we stopped doing the things that we had done for so many years to achieve sobriety exactly and so um then things got really dark in florida whereas you know i was pregnant i was with sage i was taking care of her so i had a good sufficient reason to stop right and i did and he kept going and trudging I without me. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. I'm John's a, not a quitter. Yeah, I'm a really bad alcoholic. And we picked up together when Mercedes got pregnant. I quit. She stopped immediately, but her partner couldn't. I could not put the drink down. And I didn't have a lot else to do when we got to Florida, but a bank full of money and a beautiful house that I completely remodeled. And I got to a dark, dark place where I would drink around the clock. And I could... I, I just couldn't recover. I couldn't get back on on track. Idle hands are the devil's handiwork. And, mm. and so what, what ended up happening is we were like, okay, the relationship was over. I couldn't live like that anymore. So we put the house on the market. We downsized significantly. And at the closing, that was our cash out point. We were going to cash out and split. Um, mind you, it was pretty amicable in that we weren't hating each other. It wasn't other. like a, it wasn't like a, I hope you die kind of thing. It was just like a, it's I ain't going to watch you. I ain't going to sit around and watch you die. Okay. Yeah. You want to do that. You can do that on your own. And at that closing table was one of the lowest points of my life. The closing table was a moment of, it was a moment of clarity for me. I realized I was lo losing everything that I had come to love, all the blessings that God had put in my life because I chose a drink over my family. Yeah. didn't know I was doing that yeah right and that's the danger for people like me yeah you think that you know I beat it I'm over it I can just have one drink and for guys like me I could I can't do that and so yeah. I couldn't stop I was losing everything that was worthwhile in my life and I knew at that point that if it had gone what was going I would be dead very very soon yeah and I begged Mercedes to give me one more chance yeah and uh, and you did well and and what was interesting about that is um, it's really easy for me to be like, I was perfect and he had to go and screw it all up. And it's not like that. I had obviously my side of the street, but I kept focusing on myself, taking care of me, making sure I was okay. And, um, you know, not 
playing, not getting on the merry-go-round ride, you know, and just, okay, you do that, I'm going to do this. And so I was taking care of myself and I think it gave you the space to take care of yourself. And so when you approached me and you were like, let's give this one more shot, I was, I was open to it, but I was also a little, you know, you don't want to deep reservations because I had promised so many times. To... I didn't want to get disappointed. Yeah. Right. And so what was, and it... thank God you didn't pick up a drink after oh my Sage God. was born. You know what? And that's... You think I'm bad? You guys should have saw her. No, you know what? That's kind of one of the things that pisses me off. Okay. He ruined my drinking. Like I didn't have the problem that he had and he had to go and like wreck it. Like he wasn't even having fun anymore. And I was like, oh my gosh, this, I can't touch alcohol with a 10 foot pole. This is miserable. Like, and so I, I resented you like you're wrecking my drinking, well, and, but it was a gift in the end because had I not been clear minded, I needed to be clear minded. Right, right. And I, I, I say that in jest, but really, you know, it worked out that what was our biggest negative, horrible situation ended up being a blessing because we had liquidated everything. We didn't have as many worldly possessions as we had had before. We were light. At that closing table, we were splitting the checking account. Yes. No attorneys, no nothing, and getting a divorce and going our separate ways. And we were light. So when you approached me and said, let's give this another chance, and then when you subtly snuck in the RVing piece, <laughs> th then it was like, well, we're, we're situated to RV. It's not like we got you know a mortgage and, and a house full of heavy stuff that we don't know what to do with. Right. That was pretty sneaky of you, by the way, the way that you convinced me to RV. Well, it was not really in my plan, but the house was sold. Yeah. Mercedes had said, okay, I'm gonna give you one more shot. She had rented a house that she was going to and she, she allowed me to come in. Yeah. And I began my new recovery. Yeah. Uh, my, you know, I, I began trying to do everything I possibly could and make not drinking the most important thing in my life, which I had done many years earlier. You see, Mercedes had six years sober and I was five years sober when we decided to pick up a drink together. Yeah. And at first, boy, did we have some fun. We had some unbelievable fun. I think I had fun. I but know. alcoholism is a progressive <laughs> illness yeah. and I had progressed a lot further just mm -hmm. because of my age than Mercedes mm -hmm. had. And most of you don't know, we have there's a 20 year difference between the two of us. Mm -hmm. Although and, he doesn't normally act like it, there is. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's more mature than I am. For I sure. am so it evens out. You see, <laughs> we're like at the same place emotionally. <laughs> no, but but yeah. So you had progressed further, and I hadn't gotten to those levels. I got to a place I had never gone before. I was drinking around the clock. I couldn't put down a drink. I didn't feel good anymore. Mm. I just had to have it to, to survive. It was just, I'd just fall asleep, but I'd wake up and I would start drinking again. It was a place of darkness that I had never gone. Mm -hmm. I started doing the things that I did many, many years ago when I first got sober. Yeah. I made my recovery the most important thing and then everything else would fall into place. And while I was doing that, I started watching YouTube videos of other YouTubers who were living the, the full-time RV lifestyle. And I fell in love with it. I'm like, wow, all my stuff's gone. Everything's sold. We got a yeah. boatload of money in the bank. Let's do it. Hey, I think we can do what these other YouTubers are doing, but I think we can do it better. Yeah, it'll be easy. It'll be easy, <laughs> right? Famous last words. <laughs> well, and, and what was funny, though, is that he started watching it, but he was smart because he didn't say, honey, we're going to go into an RV and, and go out right off into the sunset. He was subtle. He was like, hey, I want you to just watch one video. Just sit down with me. Just watch. Give me 12 yeah. minutes of your time. Yeah. watch this one video yeah. and then it got to the point where we were both watching together videos three or four or five hours a just night binging on these videos. but what was happening is as we started to heal as a couple the yeah. longer i stayed sober the closer we started to get the and more the more i could trust change. him right because it's a different kind of trust thank god it wasn't like an infidelity type of trust because no. that's really hard but it was still a trust of like can I trust you to not shoot holes in the boat? Right, to blow up our boat. And yeah. the other thing that was different is we started to pray together yeah. every single day. So we were together in recovery. Yeah. And we got back to the, you know, the back the, to what started it. In the back first to place. what started us together. And it was magical. It was a new honeymoon. And yeah. I brought the YouTube videos of RV full timing into Mercedes life. In the back of my head, I'm like, oh, this would be so cool. Let's do it. So I start trying to sell her. Hey, yeah. let's buy an RV, set out, go see the whole 
whole beautiful country like these other people do. Yeah. You know, and just it, it, go after freedom, independence, and adventure. Yeah. That's where we got that. Yeah. And see where it lands. And yeah. and that was it. And ultimately, Mercedes finally bought in. We started, I started getting her to well, go shopping for the RVs. And yeah. I got her out there on the lots, getting her inside of them. And she saw how absolutely beautiful these RVs were. Yeah. You, know? you did a good job, though, because you did make some concessions that I needed because I couldn't go from stationary fixed sticks and bricks living to RVing immediately. It started like a little hop and then a bigger hop. And, and he gave me things like the fact that we picked the fifth wheel, they have the biggest living space. So well, it was more work for you as far as setting it up and tearing it down. But it gave me a sense of home that I needed. Well, somewhat the way that I would say it is, is that we, the one thing we did right was we had deep, honest conversations about what this lifestyle was going to be what like. What we could live like and what we couldn't we live like. We were deeply honest with each other. And, and, and we had those discussions. I wanted to go out in the middle of nowhere and boondock by myself. Yeah. And, um, like, and Mercedes, that's pooping she. Pooping in a bucket, you know. And I was like, oh, hey, I'm not know. pooping in a bucket. So <laughs> Mercedes really liked the idea of glamping. She yeah. loved the idea of having a beautiful new motor home or a fifth wheel. Having a a kitchen that functioned, right. having laundry that worked, like having all the amenities, even if they were smaller, right. having everything that I needed to feel like a mom. Right. And know? so full hookups is yeah. what she was looking for. And we did the research and we really dug in. It was, this was a process of about six to nine months to make this transition. The other thing that you really liked was the downsizing piece. I like simplicity. I don't like a lot of clutter. Clutter is my nemesis. And right. I, I liked the idea of only having possessions that either served a purpose or brought me a lot of happiness. Right. But and the idea of that, again, we're on the same team, right? We're yep. teammates now. We're working towards the same goal. And we got closer and closer and closer together. We, yeah. Our relationship was getting deeper again. We were getting deeper into prayer and really started to feel like we had the same purpose. And another thing that really contributed to this, too, is that our daughter at the time was like three years old. So that was a big deal too, because she wasn't in a place where she needed full-time school. It's not like she was, you know, um, a senior in high school and, and trying to decide what college and she needed a certain semblance of stability, right? right? It was like at three years old, she got to experience all these things. Right. You and know? for me, having experienced three older children yeah. and knowing how fast it goes by, I wanted to spend every waking moment watching my little girl grow, grow up. Yeah. And we were before her school years. Yeah. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity for us to go out, go on an adventure, look at the country, see beautiful places, let my little girl grow up and see the most beautiful places in our and country. And see your girl growing up. And yeah. watch her grow her up, brush her teeth, wipe her bum, all the things that I didn't do with the first three. I now had a new respect for and I knew how fast it really goes. Yeah. And I just thought it would be amazing and wonderful. We did do the right things over the first six to nine months that we prepared for our RV. We made the transition that we downsized. We did really good at that. Where we messed up is where we bought our RV. Because by the time we had invested all this time, we were both really excited to jump into this lifestyle, right? People, yeah. what they do is they build it up, they build it up, they build they it up. Hype it. They YouTube hype it. These YouTube channels is yeah. hype it, hype it, hype it. And we were so fired up to get started now that we knew we were on the same page yeah. that as soon as we found the rig that we've been hoping for, that was about two and a half hours away, we immediately jumped in the truck and we drove to it. And we signed a purchase contract, not reading one. Not re yeah. You're not realizing what we were doing. If you haven't seen that video, it's buying mistakes, go check it out. This is how you do not buy an RV and you yeah. don't get taken advantage of. But it was that video that kind of solidified our audience and started bringing other RV Odd Squad members in. And, and the other thing that started happening, which seemed like a negative, but actually ended up being a positive, is all the struggles that we were having when we set off in this full-time adventure, like it ain't rainbows and butterflies. It's not rainbows so, and butterflies. So the more honest we got about it, the more it actually ended up helping us. And I, I, I would have, I never would have imagined that our YouTube channel would have grown to the, way the that size, it did. and also to the quality. Like I, I subscribe to some YouTube channels. I watch some YouTube channels, but I don't feel like we're connected. Whereas like our channel and our people, I feel like we're connected. And I, I, I never, let alone people hitting the subscribe button, but people being an active part of this community, right. I never would have imagined that. So this this has unfolded. I mean, 
you know, be careful what you pray for, people, because <laughs> yeah. you might just get, you know, a curveball. Well, ball. when you say, thine will not mine be done, yeah. be ready for anything. Do the yeah. best you can. The reality is, is that we weren't very good at RVing. <laughs> number one. <laughs> The second True. piece is is that we felt like these other channels had lied to us because they didn't talk about any of the struggles. Yeah, life ain't in slow-mo, people. <laughs> and the third piece... What was the third piece? I don't know. You'll think of it, though. That's kind of funny, though. And the third piece... I forgot my third piece. Oh, the damn third piece. <laughs> Where'd the third piece go? You'll think of it, though. You'll think of it, though. No, but every negative thing that happened to us ended up being a blessing and I never would have imagined I would have shortchanged myself in so many areas as far as what this channel has become and what it has been but you know back to this video and the end I, I remember the third piece oh good go for it the third piece was is that the RV odd squad the people that were watching our channel started to help teach us how to RV. You all felt really bad for us. And Mercedes and I made <laughs> one promise to each other when we set out. Number one, we were going to stay sober. Number two, we were going to we were gonna pray together and get as close to God as we possibly could. That's kind of where we started out. We promised the RV Odd Squad. We didn't even know that we were at the RV Odd Squad back then. But we started to promise our audience we were going to share the complete experience, good, bad, ugly, or embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And we did a lot of videos that were extremely embarrassing as a man, right? I don't, yeah. I don't want to let people know that, I, that I'm this dumb, that I was taking advantage of in that way, and that I didn't know how to fix this or fix that. And Mercedes loved when those things would come up. I'd make mistakes, and she's like, let me get the video camera, let me get the video camera. That's true, and he's like, do you have to record every single mistake I make? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> well, it seemed I to be do. working. It's working, and not just that, though, but that's what people like. I mean... White picket fences and wearing our Sunday best is killing people, okay? <laughs> no, it is because you go into a public space, you see somebody like all put together and you assume that their outsides reflect their insides. We were willing to show you guys our insides and our insides didn't always feel great, okay? And that I think is what has made this adventure different is that, yeah, you know, within reason, uh, there is such a thing as TMI, but within reason, you you got to be honest and it ain't always pretty and just lay it out there and there's a certain bravery in laying it out there ugly but real as opposed to making it all look tied up in a pretty boat well the bottom line is is nothing anything nothing in life is ever all good yeah the grass is not always greener guys there's going to be challenges and struggles with that said we love the RV lifestyle. We yeah. love the adventure, the freedom, and the independence of all of it. Which is why this video is so hard. And the first three years of our adventure were absolutely amazing. But all th good things do come to an end. Yeah, and I think also RVing has been really good for our marriage because it's such a team endeavor. Like moving this monstrosity of a vehicle is a lot of work. And doing so between two people as opposed to just one person I mean, I think it's brought us together. I think the newness of traveling to new spaces has been really good for us. I think that was the most exciting part of our being full time. Yeah. Is, is that you go to one place for two to three to four weeks and then you move on to the next one. And each time we would set out, you know, travel day is never really, uh, uh, travel day is always stressful, but it was always a new adventure. It's a fun stress. We were off to Yosemite, yeah. we were off to this place or that place or this place. And we got to see so many beautiful places in the United States. We got to meet so many amazing people. Our yeah. viewers are good people. Yeah. And we got to know the RV Odd Squad, the people who supported us and put us where we, where, where, where we, are, where we are today. Yeah. Yeah, and it's that responsibility we have to the RV Odd Squad that, that we can't let down. We learned so much along our adventure. Three years full-time RVing, we learned so much. We actually became pretty darn good RVers where we have something to give back. Yeah. You know, so right now the thing that really gets us excited is helping new RVers that are coming into the space, mm -hmm. sharing our experience with them so they know the truth of it. Yeah, it's great. It's fun. It's, 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 it's fantastic. It's exciting. It's a freedom to independence and adventure. But it's not all rainbows and butterflies, guys. And what we've done is we've told a side of the story that most YouTubers won't tell. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that's one of the reasons our channel has done so well. Mm -hmm. The next piece is we've always been honest. We come from our hearts. I believe we've lost... 75,000 subscribers because we, we get too personal with you. We, we we not only share our lives and our being, but we share our own personal beliefs. And some people take offense. 
to the way that we feel personally about things, but again, we share all of it. John's beliefs are really offensive. <laughs> well, we went through the pandemic and the, we're one year into the adventure. We had done a big, huge circle around the United States, saw the most beautiful places on this planet. And we land in Florida, bring our daughter to our pediatrician and our pediatrician gives us some really tough news mm -hmm. that we were not expecting. And that is she was diagnosed with autism. When somebody tells you information like that about your kid, it changes everything. I remember after leaving that doctor's office, we both came back to the RV. We cleaned out all the bad food. Um, we start diving into trying to figure out what is the problem? What is autism? How do you fix what it? is this spectrum they're talking about? And, 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 and it was devastating to us. We didn't know as parents what we needed to do to best help her. Well, and we felt like, I felt like it was my fault. Like I did something wrong. Right. I created this situation. I failed to do something that I should have done. Otherwise this wouldn't have happened. But suddenly our focus went off of working on videos for 60 or 70 hours a week and focusing on our daughter. So everything changed. Yeah. Not far after that, the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. So it was actually a blessing that we needed to honker down and get our daughter the help that she needed. She went to Johns Hopkins Children's Hospital. She had an amazing team that not only taught help massage, but those that team taught us how, how to, to help best Sage. help her along the way. But here's here's the difference, guys. We thought our RVing life was over at that time, and then we went live right before Christmas with the RV Odd Squad, and we explained to them what was going on. We came clean. Um, and we told him what was going on with Sage and the love, the prayers, the um, encouragement, the, encouragement, the, the tips, incredible the emails, the tips. It changed everything for, for us. At that moment, we fell in love with the RV Odd Squad. Mm -hmm. The YouTube channel didn't even matter anymore. It was Sage. But what we started to find is actually build deeper and deeper relationships with these people who were watching us on YouTube mm -hmm. through emails, sending gifts, mm -hmm. you know. And not long after that, Mercedes and I did what is called a Palooza against everybody warning us that we shouldn't do a Palooza. And we got for the very first time to meet the RB Odd Squad face to face. At a, at a big, it was like our first big meetup, kind of our first event. And it was incredible. It was incredible. Um, it was a tropical storm that weekend. People came from all over the country, right? Mm -hmm. And that weekend changed everything. We fell in love with the RV Odd Squad. And Mercedes and I made a promise to each other that our lives were going to be a life of service sharing our experience with others that come, are coming behind us. Mm -hmm. And that's where we, we've been. That's where our focus has been. And that's where it's continued to be. So we continue to shoot videos. We were stuck in one location for about a year. I say she got the therapy four days a week. We drive and um, get her the help that she needed. She still wasn't talking. It was a word. It was two words, mama, dad, and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, one day, we're sitting in the RV and we're working on a video. And Sage is sitting below us in the kitchen, right at that table, right over there. And she recited the Lord's Prayer beginning to end. And Mercedes and I lost it. We absolutely lost it. We were bawling our eyes out. We had a type of hope we had not had in a very, very long time. And we knew that Sage was going to be okay. Yeah. And we gave all the credit to the RV Odd Squad, the love, the prayers, all of it. Mm -hmm. They went in with us. They didn't give up on us. They continued to watch us as we shared our experience with all of you mm -hmm. you know and 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 then we decided to have a party yeah. to, to, to try to meet these people and you guys actually showed up and you came <laughs> you came but we finally get to meet the people on the other side of the camera that we hadn't met before yeah that was really important to us because your most valuable possession is your time and when you choose to watch a video that one of our videos that means something because you gave us your time and when we met these people that hadn't just given us their time, they came to visit us face to face. We broke bread together. It just changed everything and it changed our mission. You know, we went from trying to grow, grow, grow from really trying to serve, serve, serve. To make those relationships deeper, deeper, you know, deep, deeper and deeper and deeper. And so now when people come to see us at Thunder Canyon, we already know each other, even though we've never met before, because we have been so honest about everything in our lives and how we feel about things. We're attracting the same type of people that we are. We, we left Florida, Sage was healed, which we thought was a miracle and attributed that to the prayers and love that we got from the RV Oz Squad. And the plan was to go home to Colorado 
to see our family. We hadn't seen them for a year. It was the pandemic and Sage was getting therapy and we just needed to be up with our family. And we started on that trip out. And on the way, as you guys know, things are kind of crazy in the, in the country. I was praying for discernment because because of the pandemic, I was concerned about finding a safe place for our family if the wheels came off. And so I started praying for discernment and, and looking for a piece of land. And then suddenly I had a, just a deep vision one night in my sleep. I called two people. I explained to them what I had saw in this vision. And I, it was very clear that I needed not to get us a piece of land for our family, but a piece of land for the whole RV Yacht Squad, which is uh, huge, right? It's this crazy idea. And within the next day of me making that phone call, Thunder Canyon dropped down on Zillow, which it never should have. That's a whole other story. I'm not going to get into that. Yeah. The bottom line is, is that Thunder Canyon hit our radi radar, and since that has happened, our it's lives changed have been... <laughs> upside down because we had no idea. Now, we were praying for God's will to be done, and never in my life have I been so absolute certain on what God wanted me to do. I knew we owned Thunder Canyon before we actually got Thunder Canyon. Yeah. Um, and, and believe me, there's more stories once you come out and have a campfire with us at Thunder Canyon. We'll tell you more about that. Yeah. Um, but this thing is a mission now. This is exactly what God wants me to do with my life. I don't know how long Mercedes is going to be on the road on this roller coaster with me, but hopefully for the rest of my life. And hopefully I don't bring that uh, that term shorter because <laughs> some days I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, well, let's God. be honest. I mean, neither one of Just us throw him down the canyon. <laughs> neither one of us have ever worked as hard as we've worked in the past eleven months since we landed here in Thunder Canyon. Yeah. And now this never would have happened without the RV Odd Squad. We had people give us five hundred or a thousand dollars for this effort, mm -hmm. just trusting that God was gonna give us what we needed and got, we got exactly what we needed at the right time to make this thing work. We now have a responsibility to those people, to those families who believed in us so much, yeah. that believed so much in this vision that I had about Thunder Canyon and the Boy Scouts and a Judeo-Christian park, yeah. right? That our responsibility now is to stay right here in Thunder Canyon and make that a great, great success, not just for us, but for, but for us. those families and all of us in the RV Odd Squad. Yeah. Guys, we're growing and growing and growing in numbers. We're almost at a thousand paid members now of the RV Odd Squad. Just different levels. You can go see that whenever you want to. But as we grow, the more fun the community is coming, the more people are finding that are like-minded. The, 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 the greater lengths people are going to come here and give their sweat and their labor to help us build this vision that I believe is God's will. Mm -hmm. No, and and so we have that piece that it would be really selfish of us to say, bye folks, we're gonna go visit the Grand Canyon. Time for RV. us to take off again. Time for us to see something pretty. <laughs> Y'all have fun with Thunder Canyon. That would be so It would be selfish. amazing. We've actually talked, we've argued about this over the past three months of jumping in the RV. Okay, Thunder Canyon's done. We've We're got done. all these people. Let's. We got to get back to RV. And we got to get back to hitting yeah. the country, having fun, and forgetting we don't have a job. But the truth is, we have it a would, job it now. Would, it would be incredibly selfish of us, especially at this juncture, at this pivotal juncture. And then the other piece too, personally, you know, our priorities have changed, and Completely. and my priority right now are my chickens. Well, and my know? priority is Sage. Oh, whatever. You know, no whatever. Sage. You made me sound like a horrible mom when I say my priority are my chickens. And you're like, well, my priority well, is my dog. I, I didn't say you, it wasn't your priority. You were joking. And I'm I was saying, joking. At this point. Okay. That makes more sense because I was like, you're making me sound no, horrible. No, you're, you're, you're the perfect mother for Sage. And the chickens. The fact <laughs> is, is that we every day we ask for guidance direction and that God's will be done. And that we pray for the right people to put in our lives at the right time to accomplish his will. Yeah. And we've just said that, that that prayer every single day. And it's exactly how it has unfolded and how it has happened. We had a really bad roof leak. And it was in the middle of December. It was getting cold. So yeah. we left the RV. And we moved into a house. That was going to be for a couple of weeks, you guys. Yeah, and, but humans are like water. We occupy whatever space <laughs> cup we're in. And as soon as we got into the house... Mercedes started filling it. Well, okay. okay. <laughs> he is so full of crap. No, okay. I'm not. No, you he, feel buys, he buys our kid a Barbie, like, all the time. Well, and I he, bought her a tractor and... 
the point you is, guys is that we, a lot of Barbies. we've been filling this place up. You yes. know, our plan was to move into the house for a couple of weeks while they fixed our RV. We had planned on going back into the RV when the RV come back, but the RV was gone for a total of six weeks. Mm -hmm. So we kind of got kind of start settling into the house. And the funniest thing about the house is Sage missed the RV. But when we came to a time of giving her a choice, hey, you ready to go back in the RV? She she insisted on having a bathtub. Yeah. She absolutely loves the bathtub. It's time to get her to school. Yeah. And we're not putting her in a public school. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. We're gonna, we've chosen a, a, a curriculum called a Becca. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing too, that I think our desire to be stationary and to have something that we could always fall on, you know, some place that we could always fall and have sure footing on, um, are slightly different reasons. So, you know, I am definitely enjoying my chickens. Um, and, and I like I'm the chickens too. He, he does. He doesn't like to admit it, but he loves the chickens. They're pretty cool to watch. They're, they're so interesting. Without being doom and gloom, but let's call it like it is. I mean, I could not imagine full-time RVing. And when you were full-time RVing and you go grocery shopping, you you don't know where the grocery stores are. You're still getting a lay of the land. And could you imagine trying to get diesel or trying to get basic groceries in a place that you're unfamiliar with? And the cost going doubling and tripling and then this. And the, um, the social availability unrest. going lower and lower. So you might have to go to three stores to get what you could have just gotten in one store before. And, and you don't know the lay of the land. So there's certain things that I'm trying to call out without explicitly calling them Yeah, out. Mercedes doesn't like to get political and I'm not gonna get political, okay? But what she just said is my biggest concerns of why we, I think it's time to sit tight in Thunder Canyon. The number one thing is responsibility to those who have loved, prayed, and supported us with money to make Thunder Canyon work. Yep. It's our responsibility to get this off the ground. So we're gonna be staying here for probably at least a year. Um, hopefully we'll be out of here by next by next winter. Got we don't it. want to do another winter. We want to be in Florida or Southern Arizona. We don't like winter. Um, the next thing is, is just uncertain times. Yeah. Uh, gas prices have been double, tripling. How high will they go? Mm -hmm. um, food. Uh, I went down to a gas station yesterday. There's two gas stations in Idaho. One was completely out of diesel. Um, one was low on diesel. So I filled up every tank that I possibly could. Yeah. And, and that's the other piece too, is that you know, you don't want to get caught with your pants down because you're in a neighborhood that you don't realize is a difficult place, uh, low on the totem pole of the supply chain. And then, you know, you, you just can't literally move because you can't get diesel or all these other things. So you just have to be so careful. Well, um, let's be honest. We are in uncertain times absolutely. in new charted territory. Yes. First Amendment's being threatened. Yeah. You know, guys like me, because I have questions about the last election. I believe in God. I believe in family. I don't want my kid to be indoctrinated at the years of four to six years old with in having them impression and, and just warp her mind. I love my kid. I don't want somebody teaching her things that I don't believe in, that I believe in the First Amendment, freedom of speech. These are the reasons I, that things are so messed up. Everything's turned on its head. I would be terrified to start a full-time RV life at this time and period in our country's history. I think we got some really tough times ahead. And for me and my family, we've decided to sit tight, surround ourselves with other like-minded people, watch each other's back, and store up. So I placed us in the past 11 months since being at Thunder Canyon, I put on us, I put us in an incredible comfortable and secure situation and to weather the storm that's coming our way because i believe there's a big storm coming our way well and so <laughs> so with the, with what's going on right now and with our needs individually as a family ir irrespective of, of the country you know uh, what does that mean for our channel you know because we're, we're basically having an a, a, a identity crisis we call ourselves the rv odd couple <laughs> freedom independence and adventure you know so so henceforth, we are the Odd Chicken Channel. We're not the Odd Chicken we will Channel. Be, we will be rebranding. <laughs> you will see chickens everywhere. All things will be chicken, chicken, chicken. It'll be cluck, cluck, cluck all, yeah. the, all the time. The yeah, RV time. Odd Couple is not over, guys. We're just transitioning into what we believe God wants us to do. And, and just because we will continue to be in the RV industry, but that doesn't mean that we are going to be full-time RVing. Our, the RV is not the destination it's the vehicle that carries us on the journey and we are still on this journey and it's unfolding i don't know where this i don't know where the ship is going she don't, never knows who's knows. going next you yeah. don't even know where this is going Let's i have no idea like it is. no i don't i have no clue but as this unfolds our rv has to look different 
we have to RV differently. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going through the same thing. All of a sudden, going across country with these gas prices isn't as attractive as it used to be, I'm sure. As hell. So there's a, I, I know we're not the only ones reevaluating how can we adjust our RVing to fit our current needs and to fit our the budgets and to fit, you know, the supply chain. At the point we are in our lives right now, the best thing to do for our family, Sage just started school. Yep. Um, we filled that house. Uh, with Barbies. With Barbies and tractors <laughs> chickens. and chickens. Yeah, we'd have to downsize again to get back in our RV, and we've only been in here for five months. I know. Right? So it's just, it's just the way it's unfolded. We continue to focus and prioritize service to others, my, our brothers and sisters, as best we can. Yeah. We are in the RV space. We're going to stay in the RV space. We're yeah. not leaving. We're just going to RV differently. We're going to actually be like more typical RVers. Yeah. We are looking at a brand new Class C or Super C. Something small. Something small that we can get out for four to six weeks. And then, you know, and, and, and we're also continuing to look for more campgrounds so we can continue to grow the RV Odd Squad and this incredibly special community that we're building here. Guys, people come here from all over the country. Usually they extend a day or two because they don't want to leave. And then when they do leave, they can't wait to come back. Yeah. Something very special is going on here. If you go back to the video that we released about 11 months ago about Thunder Canyon, you're going to find out where this channel is heading. It was in the vision that I had. I'm hoping to have the first RV park in the country that is a training center. Um, we are gonna continue to put videos out in the RV space, not only of our adventures and travels, but the adventures and travels of interesting people that we meet along the way. As we you know, sh share this experience of what it's like to be campground owners, it's from a completely different perspective now. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. Know that we're not going anywhere, we're just changing. Um, we're just it's evolving. We're just evolving into you know what we believe God wants us to do, and we know we're doing the right thing, right? No doubt about it. Yeah. And we will eventually get back out on the road and start RVing again. It's just going to be RVing different. I hope that we find another park. If it's God's will, that will be done because we know for certain there are a lot of other families that want what we wanted when this whole thing started. West of the continent. West side. of the continent. We're hoping something in Florida. We're hoping something west side of Mississippi River. This channel is unfolding not just about John and myself, but about us. The and community. Like the team. Yeah. Exactly. And so we have some huge, some huge exciting announcements, but... You guys are just going to have to wait uh, for another video before we announce those, uh, especially while we prepare for our grand opening, 4th of July. So, oh, what a bash that is going to be, guys. America! So we'll see you in the next video.